Hello, welcome to the Open Heritage Adaptive Reuse Training Program. Uh, so now we're opening up a new chapter. We'll be talking about community finance. This is module three of the training, which has been developed by Platonic Atropia and Annie Clay from the Open Heritage uh, Project. So what we're going to see and talk about today is basically we'll approach a new concept, which we call community financing. We could call that alternative financing. You could call it crowdfunding. It's maybe it's more fancy, but what we really want to deal with today is how community and financing work together, right? So what types of community financing for adaptive reuse, specifically and heritage assets is more appropriate for your case? Uh, and what digital participatory models, platforms, and experiences shall we know before we make any move in the di digital world, right? Uh, we'll also look at a very specific uh, funding scheme, what, which we call that uh, my foundation, uh, Goteo Foundation Match Funding, which is basically a corresponsible scheme between uh, citizen funding and public funding. Uh, we'll be looking at the specific model and the, 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 the pros and cons. Uh, and then I'll let you know a little bit what we can learn from the Goteo platform, which I'm re representing. I'm a co-founder. I'll tell you in a minute what type of experience can, can it teach us, right? So what we'll be doing exactly in this session, it's in, divided in two chapters. My colleague, Terrain, you'd have to look at the uh, second video after, after that. Basically, I'll be talking first about theoretical approaches to community financing and crowdfunding. Uh, I'll look at match funding, the corresponding scheme I was just mentioning in the slides, in the previous slides. Uh, I'd like to end up this chapter by recommending some of the materials we've been producing for your own training. So I think it's also good. You'll find these materials on the platform. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to the Community Financing Barometer Game, which is a game we've been creating basically to uh, deploy kind of a metaphor on how digital uh, community financing is working and what you should what type of criteria and values you should incorporate in your project to make sure that the crowd will respond to your call right and then you'll have the second chapter in the second video uh my colleague Terrin looking at observatory cases from the open heritage project and uh, we'll be inviting you on participating also in this module by providing cases so here we go. So I'm uh, I'm Olivier. I'm the I'm the co-founder of the Goteo platform and uh, uh, Platonic Foundation. Uh, so we've been running a civic digital crowdfunding platform for the last ten years, and that's basically all the the, the lessons I'm bringing on the table today uh, come from that specific experience. So uh, I'm not talking from the consultant side. I'm talking from a, a practitioner side and a designer of uh, founding schemes which uh, may create some uh, interest in your in your cases right uh, worth mentioning we are part of the Euro european crowdfunding network which has been renamed eurocrowd in the last year so that's also important that uh, all the, the lessons that i'm sharing with you have been also being sharing on the european level with different platforms uh, looking at applying uh, alternative funding to community building here we go so uh, starting with the theoretical and practical approach uh, to community financing, my usual question, and you see these typical egg questions, what comes first, right? Creativity, governance, or challenging finance? So when we talk about a project uh, in need of financing, of course, we're talking about like you need to be very creative. That means you have already created a project, but you need probably, and that's one of our first lessons to learn today, uh, you should probably think about co a governance model, which is basically has to do with the, the second module of this training. Uh, and you then should think about channeling finance. And what we see here is like, I'm, you know, what the, the main word we need to, you know, really visualize is empowerment. So we basically through uh, alternative schemes or new types of governance module, we should basically think about the empowerment of our own community and extend it and replicate it uh, to the rest of the society, right? Uh, so basically, you've been lo looking at the circular governance principles uh, from, from the click model uh, in the previous uh, module. I'd like, basically, I have good news for you. The same types of values or indicators are used for community financing. So we, when we talk about community financing, we're talking about participatory models. We're talking about inclusive financing. We, we're talking about a strong commitment to transparency and accountability, uh, we, we, we of course mean this is a collaborative process. And then we also have to think about the circular uh, indicator or lens 
basically focusing our development on uh, in, on iterative uh, processes, right? And of course, uh, in a more general manner, we need to make sure the process we're developing both under the governance uh, uh, model or under our new financing model is fair and just, right? So again, uh, no worries. Uh, what we've, you've been uh, uh, learning in the previous modules are really like ap ap applicable or replicable in this new module, right? Before we get into funding in itself, I'd like to remind you uh, that as part of the Open Heritage Project, my organization, Platonic, has been in charge of developing a platform uh, which would allow for all the, these different labs that are involved in the project, six labs around Europe, to produce or to create these proce different processes of open collaboration that should be transparent and traceable, that should be integral, that should guarantee the democratic quality in the process of participation they're de developing. So when I talk about participation, you see I'm in integrating the idea of community financing as a way of building more participation, right? And then we should think about that the, when we use a digital platform, we should guarantee that we have privacy and security, right? So first and foremost, we do use a, a platform as part of the Open Heritage Project, and you see which is also integrating some crowdfunding uh, features right now. Uh, so we have been using a platform which is called Decinim, which was uh, designed by the city of Barcelona. You, I think you've seen that in the previous modules. And we have been creating the digital platform for democratic processes along the project, right? With strong ethical principles. What you see is basically the operational design for participation. And you see that different modules that can be combined. So a platform is always a puzzle and you need to really, really create your own path and the path of your community uh, to use the best these types of platforms. So no worries. Uh, you can make the path very, very simple, right? A donate button should be enough, but sometimes you're probably your community members or the people you want to reach more beyond funding should be, or maybe, or probably would like to be more involved in every types of, pro of, of processes you're running as a lab, right? Or as a, as an heritage site. Um, so here you go. That's exactly how the, 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 the landing page of the Open Heritage participatory platform looks like now. And this is basically, I'm recommending that this should be a previous stage to funding, as I was mentioning in the previous slide. So let's talk first, or let's do talk with your members of your community or the affected by uh, the challenges you're facing as an organization into the process of deciding on the type of governance that you want and then decide the uh, go for decision uh, decision on the you know the, the funding scheme you want to choose so basically think about first facilitating community and stakeholders involvement locally you can do that digitally with a platform such as the one we built for open heritage you can think about uploading so on talking about transparency the results uh, of all your collaborative and crowdsources crowdsource processes and participatory processes on the platform anyone should look at them should you know so it should be uh, basically available for anyone interested in the process allow community discussions have many of them debates uh, votations on the platform and most of all provide an overall documentation of the entire reuse process happening on your site all your, the, your decisions uh, uh, your, your adaptive reuse model should also be discussed or shared with the community etc etc so provide a reliable source of information for all parties that's the first step before you go to funding right so make everything clear, make the whole the rules of your own game, your community game clear, and then go for funding. Uh, and th that's another uh, uh, issue you should look at. So uh, I think the, 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 the good thing about these digital platforms is that they bring statistics to you. So they should be, of course, available to all the community, but it's a great uh, tool for you to measure the impact of your different campaigns, of your engagement campaigns, of your funding campaigns. So uh, think governance first and then think about how will I measure my impact? So which type of data will I produce? So think that, you know, if you use a funding platform, a decision-making platform, they produce data. And this is basically your food for thought for everyday life, right? Here we go. So I'll show you a couple of, uh, of modules that have been developed as, as part of this platform. I think it's really important. So we have this, uh, um, you know, we, we thought that specifically when we talk about Decision making, uh, decision making, and on, on alternative funding schemes for a lab or for a specific heritage site should also talk to 
uh, you know, the community around the site, but also to every member more visually than textually. So uh, the big default of these platforms is that they talk too much, they have too much text and don't, they don't have in, enough pictures. So that's an example of how we've been basically improving the platform to make sure that anyone interested in managing or co-managing or being involved in, you know, parties of this type of heritage site should look at, you know, that's exactly the site I'm recognizing the space so I can participate easily, easily. And I also have on, on, uh, on, on the right side of this slide, you see I also have a map. So basically the, the ma this map informs me that now it's time to take decision on how will we renovate block A of this series of these puzzles of buildings that this barn is, uh, is integrating, right? So think about community space, right? Uh, an important uh, lesson we bring from Barcelona, so we are an organization based in Barcelona, uh, we have been developing under, uh, you know, researching the case of a specific uh, heritage site called Can Batlo uh, in Barcelona. And, and we have de been developing together with uh, some partners of the Open Heritage, what we call a volunteer's impact module for the decision platform, which allows the community to basically measure the time spent by volunteers on managing the space. So that's an example. So um, in, in that case, we're talking about the space Count Batlow, which is an old industrial space that was a, a fabric, uh, textile fabric. And uh, during the, the year in, um, 2017, uh, almost 50,000 people passed through there, through the, the space. They've been participating in more, almost a thousand activities that involve 82,000 hours of volunteers work. And basically what we have been developing here is a system to basically translate this amount of hours into an economic uh, value, right? So basically, uh, if you think that, uh, for example, all the volunteers who have been cleaning, uh, renovating the space, uh, it's a public space managed, you know, it's, it's a property of the city. That means the community uh, is able with this system to basically translate the time of, uh, you know, an hour of a volunteer is equivalent to an hour of a municipal uh, technician. And then I have a price. So I can basically from, we, we won't get into all the details, but basically the, the calculation uh, says for every euro that the Barcelona city invest in the Conbatlo fabric, it resides five from the community involvement, right? So that's basically something, another lesson we should take care. So we need this type of data on the impact of our uh, co-managing on our volunteers program uh, to make sure that funding is, is, is uh, basically uh, correlated with our activities. So I think it's it's important to mention that Combat Law, through that uh, calculation, bringing that calculation on the paper of policymakers, just obtain the seas of the of the space for uh, 50 years, which is amazing. So think about volunteers as basically um, you know transformed into uh, an economic value. So I think it's time, no taboo about. Uh, talking about economic impact of uh, volunteerism, I think it's time basically when we talk about community financing to make sure that this amount of work by the community has a, you know, a weight in the negotiation with uh, public bodies, right? Um, so this is basically how this system works. So uh, if I'm entering the site and I'm going to do some uh, Work, site working today and basically uh, you know uh, entering in the system so the application is tracking my time and then each of the members of this community has a has its own dashboard that you, you can see here examples of uh, uh, I can see the the, um, uh, the dashboard of, of my work so I, I've been doing some electricity work some wall painting 90 percent 10 percent is still uh, uh, to do uh, I've been doing some carpentry parquet flooring and we have that dashboard for every a single member of the organization. And then we're able to calculate the progress of the community work and of, of the renovation work. And also we are able to you know, transform these times amount of hours into an economic value. Uh, talking about economic value, we also have been developing as part of the Open Heritage uh, uh, participatory platform, a very specific feature which allows uh, communities or heritage sites to organize their own crowdfunding platform through the participatory platform so you don't have some you know that, that allows you to do everything in a very integrated process uh, all your participatory process organized um, under one single uh, platform right but that's an example right so coming back to financing and alternative financing or community financing as we like to call it uh, I think when we talk about financing 
uh, and you've you, you've seen uh, you've seen I'm always associating uh, financing with uh, the world community. We need to think about these financing platforms are pr a place or places for active collaboration, for core responsibility and transparency, right? Through crowdfunding, but it's the tool we've been choosing. But basically, we're talking about community building, and then we talk about money, right? Uh, so these are uh, a series of data. You see, we love data at Platonic. Uh, basically, we've, we've, that's the amount of, of money we've been raising through the, uh, for social projects through the platform. And uh, we basically look at different lenses, so transparency, uh, social impact, to measure the impact of the platform, right? But coming back to more uh, basic scheme, what do we mean by crowdfunding, right? It's pretty easy. You see that in crowdfunding, you have two words, crowd and funding. So the multitude and the funding on both sides. So I think it's interesting to see, it's a very easy. But if we want to look at the, uh, the, basic, uh, the basic definition, we're talking about collective cooperation, attention and trust by people who network and pool their money or their efforts via the internet, of course, to support efforts initiated by other people, or organizations, right? So uh, I think crowdfunding was coined by combining crowd and funding, indicating that many of the individuals provide their own contributions to create a fund. So that's uh, from Chinbacher and Laharde from 2010. So it's pretty recent, right? Uh, of course, crowdfunding is only a specific moment in the life cycle of civic initiatives. Uh, so we basically talking about the fact that Usually when we talk about initiating a funding uh, with a, a project which has not a great community yet, uh, usually um, community members or the communities think, well, that's a Death Valley. How do I start? Uh, and basically what crowdfunding brings, it's a good tool for the start. But basically this where crowdfunding is really good in basically in the creation of of uh, of um, of community right and then of course it's it's not uh, an end to end process it's basically only a step in the life cycle of uh, your organization growing you know so uh, basically most probably after crowdfunding you'll need some public funding you probably need some crowd lending and you probably need also some uh, impact uh, uh, impact uh, investors to help so we'll be talking about an equity uh, scheme later on uh, uh, further on, the, on on your path right so basically think about this initi initial uh, step of the life cycle of, of your organization so crowdfunding took a big rise historically since the 2007 uh, crisis and gradually it shifted from donation based uh, to more investment like types but uh, you know where did it all start basically it's funny that talking about architecture talking about heritage sites Basically, the, the first documented uh, crowdfunding campaign uh, in the analogical world, in the pre-internet world, is the Statue of Liberty, uh, which is thought to be with one of the first documented crowdfunding projects. So what it's, it's uh, beautiful. What you see on the right is basically because they didn't have a platform to uh, register, they basically registered manually all the uh, donations from each of the uh, donors or backers. That's how we call them. Uh, and it's interesting that the language uh, in the middle that you see on this flyer is basically exactly the same that we're using on crowdfunding platform. So uh, for a certain quantity of money that you're bringing, $1, we give you incentives. Uh, so basically for $1, you get some very something specific in return. For $5, then you get uh, uh, some of the uh, postcard of the Statue of Liberty, for example. So that's basically the origin of all it, all right? Uh, talking about today and what we uh, really want to express as part of the Goteo uh, platform is basically that when we, we specifically talk about a specific crowdfunding uh, model, which is the civic crowdfunding, and we do think that uh, civic crowdfunding is the most powerful instrument and it's a powerful instrument for public participation and policy innovation. Uh, and we see many, many initiatives rising, crossing boundaries, between activism, advocacy, social entrepreneurship, and social innovation. So I think we, we really think about a, a, a new like policy tool that influence uh, citizens, or I mean, that amplify citizens' influence in public life, right? So basically at Goteo, we're really focusing on, on a social project. You see a couple of them here. So social audiovisual documentaries, uh, social and solidarity economy, uh, cooperatives are, are funded through our platform. Uh, we're talking about social cause like strikes in, in big companies. We're also talking about certain types of uh, alternative uh, journalism, 
So we're good at it, and we're also good at, at financing heritage sites, right? Uh, a couple of examples I would like to, talking about territories and, and, uh, and our environment. This is one of our, the one on the right, the project called, is called Spain in Flames, and it's, it's, an, it's a big mix of uh, independent journalism and analysis of uh, public database on uh, forest fires in Spain that basically help to uh, uh, research on uh, the effect of cutting budget of volunteerism on fire uh, on, on uh, fire stopping, and I think uh, uh, so. Open it's basically a project which looks at open data visualization of forest fires, their causes and solutions, and then sweep data from investigating reporting. And on the right, that's another project which I love. It's basically a citizen parliament which looks at uh, the effectiveness, the transparency, and the accountability of the work of our MPs in the government. Uh, just to name a few, right? Coming back to the subject, which is basically heritage site. Um, I like to look at heritage, uh, at least our definition for us today is uh, heritage belongs to everyone. Uh, we're talking about common goods that must be defended by the community, right? So, uh, and, and recover it from collective oblivion. So we need, you know, crowdfunding is kind of a way of, uh, of putting your, uh, putting the finger on, 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 on the necessity of, uh, renovating some of these heritage sites. And uh, so I'd like to see crowdfunding as, uh, you know, with the big H of history, heritage, uh, and, and, and what we'd be talking in the, in the last few uh, minutes is basically how digital participatory platforms and funding platforms, crowdfunding platforms can help, uh, can help, you know, make sure that uh, uh, open heritage sites are renovated and kept, um, kept safe. Okay, so talking about heritage sites, that's one of the most uh, famous ones. So remember, so your good days at Rome. But I'm using that uh, space basically to explain or as a metaphor of how a crowdfunding platform works and what are the different elements of a crowdfunding platform, of a CV crowdfunding platform. So we're basically talking about what we call the great crowd construction platform. So what are these elements? Of course, the lending, you know, if you look at the center of this space is where everything happens. It's basically where... Uh, the project shows up and we, you know, it would be the equivalent of a landing page of a platform. Uh, so the, the arena would be a landing page where all the projects uh, show off and uh, all around you'd have these, uh, you know, uh, these, these what we call the capacity building workshops on co-creation and crowdfunding uh, training fields. So of course, crowdfunding is not easy to, to do. So you need some training. So they, let's face it. So make sure that the, 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 the platforms need to have a strong foundation on making on capacity building, right? Uh, so we make sure that every member of the community is, is trained um, uh, on, on the implication of these new types of funding, right? Uh, we, we'd love to look at uh, also uh, at the past funded projects on the platform. We call these the library of solidarity and learning. Basically, when we have a project, the best is to look at projects which are similar to yours and look if uh, you can learn from them. And, and most of it, you, you can very uh, you know, learn from, from these good cases that are around you. Uh, of course, the data is something we should value the most. So there's many, many data on, uh, on uh, how effective have been campaigns from the same typology of yours. I think it's something to take in consideration. So we have a great effort of publishing data at Goteo. Uh, and of course, the most important ingredient would be the crowd. But let's face it, we need to think that the crowd is not enough. So citizens are not enough. Uh, we, you know, crowdfunding somehow could be interpreted uh, by uh, public bodies that, okay, now uh, citizens have a, a systems to uh, fund projects. So it's not uh, our duty anymore as a public body to fund social projects. No, that's a mistake. So basically what we're trying to do at Gautier Foundation is that the crowd involvement should always imply a response by bigger funders, may them be public or, uh, or private. We call them matchers. So each, uh, I'm calling, uh, I'll be uh, explaining you that uh, in the next slides, right? So here we go. We should cut that off because, uh, for some reasons, I'm repeating the uh, the animation. No worries about that. We'll see after that a couple of examples of uh, heritage sites who have been funded on our platform and see what we can learn from them. Okay, so that's the case of a actually a space which has been opened uh, and integrated this week. So. I I think it's it's a great news, uh, and it's called Ateneo La Maliciosa in Madrid, right? And it's a space to promote dialogue, solidarity, anti-racism, mutual support, and a collective search for solutions, betting on citizen participation, politics from below, 
the promotion on, on, of culture and free technologies, and bringing eco-social responses to uh, current problems of the city of Madrid. Uh, so I, that's that's a, a couple of that's an example of a uh, one heritage site who has been renovated through a crowdfunding uh, platform. Actually, the, uh, it shows the data of uh, in the middle of the campaign. It has been very successful. Uh, interestingly enough, when I was talking about combining uh, renovating your governance model and uh, heritage sites and the way you found these types of initiatives, I think that the Ateneo La Maliciosa is a very it's a great example because basically the space was purchased through a services cooperative. So this is different cooperatives that have been associating uh, specifically to uh, buy and renovate this this uh, this space who belonged to the city before, and I think that that's just great. So uh, it's called Espacio de Espacio, Espacio de Espacio uh, Cooperativa Madrileña. So all the involved parties uh, can, uh, have a strong commitment uh, by selling, you know, acquiring commitment because they've been uh, basically buying their part uh, through contracting debt. So I think it's an interesting model of uh, of uh, combined financing between crowdfunding and and investments in uh, uh, by cooperative members. So very, uh, uh, we look at the platform uh, of this training module and uh, you'll get uh, the link and uh, to to the analysis of that case. Another case. <clears throat> Sorry, another interesting case uh, is called Ob Objetivo Venus, uh, the Venus objective, right? Uh, it's basically born from uh, um, very identified collective needs. You see, that we're talking about uh, uh, building in in uh, in uh, in a district in Barcelona uh, called La Mina. So it's a neighborhood which struggles to make itself heard in a social reality where citizen participation is a scarce common good. And where administrative care is uh, basically uh, so prudent that it goes unnoticed. So basically, these citizens are reclaiming uh, basically the the um, um, I'm reclaiming uh, you know the renovation of the space. Of the it's been a, a case for 25 years, and I think it's interesting to see that they've been combining uh, governance discussions, uh, meetings. Uh, with the policymakers and the crowdfunding campaign as a way of pushing, uh, uh, you know, the citizen lobby, uh, on the, uh, make, making sure that uh, uh, you know the, the campaign was uh, attracting lots of attention. And at the end of the of the campaign, the project managed to both raise funds and push local policymakers to take action. And basically, they obtained an agreement to demolish the Venus building and re, re, rehouse its inhabitants with public and dignifying guarantees. So I think it's an interesting uh, case of what we call crowd advocacy. So basically, we're using crowdfunding to uh, create a case and push local policy, policymakers to take action. Uh, I think it's a great example. Another example of this kind is, uh, is again, in Barcelona, uh, an heritage site uh, which, which was uh, transformed in a gymnasium, a social gymnasium. Uh, gymnasium uh, for for uh, uh, basically for for people who have uh, of no means uh, economic means. Uh, it's basically more than just a, bu a building. It's co it's also lo located in a very poor area called the Haval of Barcelona, and really it represents the space represents years of struggle to create and maintain a, a full and diverse community uh, in the face in, in to pressure the gentr to gentrify within the popular tourist destination. Right, so. Uh, Basically, it's talk about uh, community building against gentrification, right? Uh, interesting enough, they, this initiative combined crowdfunding on, on, on the platform as well as uh, chasing for signatures of citizens to reclaim, we call that citizen initiatives, um, to reclaim the use, the social use or the public use or the community use of this public building, right? So in 2018, the citizen cooperative from the Sampa community uh, started to dream big and launch uh, these uh, citizen initiatives on the uh, Barcelona, the city in Barcelona, which is the uh, municipal participatory platform. And their initiative proposed reclaiming the surrounding block and building 50 public and inclusive housing units in the building, so above the gymnasium, right? Uh, that's an example uh, of the second campaign they've been organizing. And, and of course, that's a great news again here. Um, the municipality has basically acquired the building uh, and basically uh, has also uh, developed a seas for the community. And so basically that uh, building has been safe, it is safe now against gentrification and uh, social housing will be uh, developed as part of the building. So I think it's also another great lesson. So you, you see that all these 
different cases have something in common, right? Uh, basically, they have a strong social commitment. So the question you need to ask is, what is our social commitment as a community? Uh, and what is the social commitment of the adaptive reuse uh, model we'll be choosing? But basically, when we talk about, you don't, in the crowdfunding, talking about crowdfunding, you're not talking uh, really about money, but you're talking, you have spreading message straight to the art of people who are uh, supposed to help you. So you need to be, to, to talk about from the empathy uh, side to, uh, you need to create visceral connections. You need to use collective and deploy collective imagination. Storytelling would be the best tool. You need to think about how you can create story with the data. So again, think about the hours of volunteering on, on the site. Uh, think about the impact you can create around you. Uh, build some interviews on the community and neighbors are living around, etc. cetera. So uh, really the, what works best is a message of urgency. So if you have a very long project, uh, maybe it's better to you know split it in different parts and think about the e urgency of each of these steps of your life cycle, right? Uh, don't hesitate to use the formal, both combining formal and informal uh, language. I think it's important. And, and I think the best lesson would be use irony and humor. So memes and all that is also reaching the, uh, the, the political bodies, right? Um, so think about them as receptors and also as citizens. So I think the, you need to uh, make your own uh, cooking with these different uh, aspects of communication. But I think that's so important to consider that crowdfunding means a great ca uh, uh, communication campaign, right? So talking about more on, uh, uh, let's get back to the bird view. When we talk about uh, community funding, we need to think that the cosmology of these different uh, alternative funding uh, schemes is pretty large, right? So uh, you have on one side what we call alternative finance. So you consider like, for example, social impact bonds, micro loans. We have on the right, on the, on the other side, digital finance, a bit more classic. So all these online payments and social payments. Uh, there's a whole bunch of initiatives uh, looking at blockchain-based finance. Uh, so cryptocurrencies, uh, blockchain-based remittances, initial coin offerings, etc. So it's a bit... It gets very, very technical, but if your, your community is very technical, maybe that's a way to, to uh, do finance. But what we really look at these today is crowd finance and crowdfunding. So you have these different uh, models. Uh, so lending-based, reward-based, donation-based, and equity-based. And you have to think about what's your best uh, model. What we recommend is starting with the donation-based and then jump into the equity model, right? Um, I'd like to recommend also a, a book by our partners, um, uh, Atropian, uh, which, which brings all different cases together. Uh, it's called Funding the Cooperative City, Community Finance and the Economic of Civic Space, uh, edited by Daniela Patti and Levante Poldiak. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, you should really look at it. So you have different examples or cases of community land trust uh, in different uh, different. Uh, the countries around Europe, right? So uh, again, back to these different models, donation-based, reward-based, equity-based, lending-based, what's your you know, ideal or uh, uh, founding scheme? You'd have to look at the specificities of this model. So uh, you have to divide uh, these models into uh, three pillars. So look at the form of contribution you're expecting from the community. Uh, look at the form of incentives that you're offering them. Uh, and then really start analyzing the motivation of your funders, right? Uh, talking about the donation crowdfunding, the form of contribution is basically donation. So you receive donations from backers. Uh, probably the form of return is intangible benefits. So uh, you have to be very creative on offering them incentives. And basically what we've been looking at is like the motivation of these type of founders is basically intrinsic and social motivation. So again, talk to their hearts. Uh, reward crowdfunding uh, is basically about offering rewards, but also intangible benefits in exchange of a donation or a pre-purchase, right? And probably the, the motivation of the founders, of the backers, is a combination of interesting and social motivation and desire for reward, right? Uh, when we talk about crowdfunded lending, we talk about a loan. So uh, this is basically uh, the type of contract happening between the, the project and the, the contributor, right? right? Through a loan contract. So we're talking of a form of return which is very specific, which is a repayment of loan with interest, right? Uh, of course, it's somehow combined with some socially motivated lending. If we're talking about uh, social impact investment, uh, it's, it's great to consider a combination of interesting social and financial motivation, right? 
when we talk about the creative crowdfunding, which is one of my favorite, we're talking about investment, right? So it's a, the form of return is a return on investment in time if the business does well, only if the business or uh, the, the, the community site does well, right? Is worth. Uh, and it's a, basically the motivation is a combination again of interesting social and financial mo motivation. But I think the combination of uh, reward crowdfunding and equity crowdfunding is probably something to consider, right? And that's that's what we recommend at Goteo. You have lots of uh, studies that have been uh, uh, being published. One of of them by the by Nesta, which looks at powering local regeneration through crowdfunding investment or equity specifically. Uh, and I think that's something uh, the link will be published also on the platform of the website, right? Let's look uh, uh, at the factors of uses of crowdfunding, right? And that's basically looking at uh, uh, the years of standing our, the community, uh, you know, uh, living around our platforms, go to, right? Uh, you could divide them and uh, the motivation for which users participate in crowdfunding platforms into uh, big categories, as we've been uh, looking in the previous slide. Uh, one which we call like the alternative, like, uh, you know, we could call it democratic philanthropy. philanthropy. So that's basically where civic crowdfunding uh, acts and is good at. So, uh, and basically we're talking about uh, giving value to transparency, cooperation and democratic practice, uh, understanding aspect as, you know, being an alternative. Uh, we're basically talking about giving priority to the emotional and let's say the democratic side or ideologic sides of campaigns and the uh, heritage side should be, you know, if you think about democratic uh, funding or civic crowdfunding, it's really about making sure uh, you pro you provide all the value, uh, the e measurement on the social impact of the site, et cetera, et cetera. That's basically the motivation of, uh, of the backer, right? And then uh, you have the classical for-profit uh, scheme, uh, which is basically, uh, but of course, when we talk about uh, equity crowdfunding, we should we should redefining we be refining profit, of course, because it's a it's a it's a combination of uh, social interest and profit. Um, we basically need to clarify the effectiveness of interest and business, and and, and basically uh, the for profit is a sum to the crowdfunding advantage to uh, more model innovation, kind of a wider dissemination and and, and validating. Uh, ideas along uh, along along the long term, right? Basically, what we uh, when we talk about the uh, go to community and in general uh, the community around uh, CV crowdfunding platform, they have they really uh, look at these three pillars before they act, right? So they look at uh, transparency. If you can give us a project, transparency. Uh, how legitimate is your initiative? If it allows cooperation beyond beyond funding, I think it's, it's interesting to see. So I want to uh, also probably uh, contribute with my time uh, and and uh, and help. So I think it's a win-win uh, uh, to be considered. And you have to look at the principle of solidarity, right? So it's a requirement for the civic crowdfunding, right? Uh, what we insist a lot in Gotel is that you know we look and we measure the social impact of this initiative, right? So we have data. Uh, to be, be, best communicate the impact of these initiatives, right? Uh, good. So uh, usually promoters should respond to transparency, legitimacy, cooperation and solidarity, and probably donors uh, look specifically at legitimacy, more and solidarity and transparency, right? Here we go. So you looking at the motivation of the nations that many, many studies that we're gonna be sharing on the platform too, on the training platform, uh, which which looks at different motivation schemes in different countries in Europe. I think uh, uh, we don't have time to look at that slide, but I think it's interesting to look at uh, indicators such as reciprocity, altruism, uh, ph philanthropy. Uh, sometimes the motivation is only curiosity, and you look that the, these different populations in different countries are reacting very different differently to the model of uh, community financing. So it's important to look at these type of studies if you're basically thinking of a uh, of a national campaign or regional campaign. And if you can on a European uh, scale one, then I think it's also good to look at these, uh, uh, all these reports uh, from the Eurocrowd network, right? This is gonna be shared on the platform again. Uh, there's many also study on drivers and fears of society for crowdfunding. Uh, so fear for scam, uh, fear for lack of knowledge. Or you may think that uh, elder, elder people may not have access to uh, digital platforms to uh, deal with payment, etc. And probably lack of trust in projects in general, or lack of trust in platonic. So we in 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 the platform, right? So you 
really uh it's a, it's a really combination you should look uh, at uh, what are these added values of these alternative funding schemes basically we talk about open innovation a crowdfunding campaign is a perfect market research i try to translate these community values into something more traditional but i think your funders would like to look at you know uh, your your funding campaign through these uh, type of uh <coughs> of of um of keywords right marketing uh crowdfunding allows uh the community to set up a proof of concepts um basically you need it's, you it allows you to taste new services new type of activities and see if the community responds to them so there's big space for uh testing mistakes etc and of course the the the, uh, the community building aspect of a crowdfunding campaign is essential right uh if you think about uh, social impact investors, what they really want to see that uh, a project or a community or a site has already uh, an involved community, a very uh, committed community, using it, uh, improving it, etc. So I think that's a great value to jump uh, from the uh, initial crowdfunding schemes to uh, some public funding schemes or, or equity, right? Good. Uh, what is interesting is that we've with with COVID nineteen, we've looked at uh, uh, again a shift back to the to donation and reward crowdfunding, right? So uh, that's a, this big U return uh, in evolution towards donation based crowdfunding. As uh, local initiatives, uh, as you know, are in urgent need of aid, capital, and quick response money, right? So it's interesting to look at that. So I'll give you a couple of examples um of campaigns that have been raised uh, during the covid crisis uh first uh, second and uh, third wave uh, that's an example of uh called vodka de alquileres uh, so basically a fund was created to support a rent strike by renters and support renters who might otherwise be left without staple necessities and raise awareness about the issue so it's interesting that uh, uh, we again talk about urgency we talk about buildings territories the city um so so uh, i think that's uh, also a great example uh here of a uh, crowd advocacy of uh, using crowdfunding to have more uh, uh to make sure that citizens uh influence the city and how the governments are changing laws so a law was uh changed uh, after the campaign uh, in barcelona for example so basically i'd like to look at again when we talk about community financing Crowdfunding is the basic word we're using, but our real question is, can we make sure that crowdfunding is always combined with crowd benefits? What do I mean with crowd benefits? Again, the, uh, crowd on the, if you separate the, the, the crowdfunding uh, word in two, we have the, the multitude on one side and the funding on the other one. Uh, but what happened if we guarantee that beyond the funding, and beyond who is able or has the economic capacity of participating in a crowdfunding campaign or the time to participate in a participatory process, we should ensure through these alternative models that we create benefits for the crowd, for the multitude, right? I think it's important to say because uh, it's really a step further in the crowdfunding scheme that uh, uh, we'd love that your case apply, right? So that's an example of uh, the intense uh, training programs we've been uh, involved in the last 10 years. Uh, and I think that's also so important that, uh, and of course with COVID it's more complicated that people, and you, you know, can people gather together and build governance and build the uh, funding campaigns together. So it shouldn't be the only the one and only responsibility of our uh, financial administrator. Forget about it, right? Uh, think about really, uh, crowdfunding and community financing as democracy in action. So in addition to entering the core alternative finance options, crowdfunding has also earned a primary role as a means of democratization of finance. I think it's important to consider. That's uh, really important here. Um, and again, specifically, civic crowdfunding refers to asking for funding and providing it to a large crowd of individual individuals, but also to the processes of uh, decision-making, co-creation, uh, civic engagement, co-ownership that is produced in all parties involved. I think that's the, the most uh, of uh, the lesson we need to uh, learn today is around that. So make sure that, yes, we're sorry, we are open. That means uh, we think from an open perspective and we're using open tools and free software tools for this. So as part of Goteo, we have been creating uh, the standard for community financing. It has been recognized of the one of the clearest and best articulated framework. Um, 
which which thinks about funding with the idea of giving back to the community, right? So basically, uh, what what is allowed on the on on the GoTo platform is that beyond money, you can ask for people's time. So uh, people can contribute with uh, uh, talents or tasks or skills. But you could also ask for infrastructure. Uh, we, you could also ask for material goods, so we're talking about circular economy, right? And then you'd have to consider as a project to create these incentives, these rewards you wanted to offer to the community, right? So basically, these, these could be expressed or uh, materialized on, as uh, digital archives, code if you create software, manuals if you create activities, or uh, you create new types of governance schemes. So for example, the manual or how did we build our governance model designs. If you are uh, basically uh, through the, your adaptive reuse process, you're creating some new designs, some blueprints. This is something which is abso absolutely valuable to share and something that people could uh, 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 want to get and, and be ready to uh, offer money in exchange. You should think about specific products and services and look and listen at your community so to make sure uh, that they participate and then you could also offer the infrastructure itself the heritage site as a structure for you know uh, someone to uh, make a video clip someone to organize meetings and you should pay for it right uh, what we have added to uh, this model as part of the goto since we have a great commitment with open licenses is that you should make sure that all these materials are you know downloadable online so it's not about only the people who have paid for it that can access it but later on on the track uh, basically, you'd have to have a simplified version of all these rewards uh, accessible on the internet somewhere. That would be the best case. You don't have to. And I know also it also implies some effort, work, uh, extra effort. So as part of your crowdfunding uh, campaign cost, when you do the budget, you should add, all right, I need someone to make sure that we have a, we digitalize all of these uh, uh, very important and valuable uh, tangible or you know, intangible um, uh, actions we're creating, right? Okay, so as part of Goteo, we have another mantra, which is basically show me the money. When talking about transparency, I think it's so essential when, I, if I'm a backer and I want to, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I have an interest for your heritage site or innovation, and I want to participate uh, with my time or money, I basically need to see your numbers and what your intentions are, I have to spend the money. So basically that's, that's another uh, aspect of Goteo, which is so, uh, important. All right. So we're closing the chapter of uh, alternative funding, and we look at an addition to that, which uh, at, at Goteo Foundation and Plat my organization Platonic, uh, we are we, we've been pioneering this model that we call match funding. So what is match funding? Match funding is basically a co-responsible crowdfunding model that involves everyone. So that's basically we're talking about co-funding between citizens and private or public institutions. So that's why we have the big M of matching, right? It's a bit of the, the Tinder of financing, right? <laughs> okay, so that's a little animation to explain you how this goes. So think about a citizens uh, bringing one euro or five euros to a campaign. What we propose with the match funding scheme is basically that each of these contributions from the citizens is multiplied immediately by a public or a private body. Uh, that basically means that both citizenship and private or public bodies uh, decide together. But basically, the most uh, the, the public bo public bodies or private bodies are basically showing that they're trusting the criteria of the citizens to basically identify where the social impact stands in which of the uh, different initiatives that are published on the different platforms they consider it will have an impact, right? And by basically donating to this project, the impact is already growing, right? So we have experience on this, creating these models, where we have creating 20 uh, uh, schemes, 20 uh, campaigns around Europe. Uh, and if, you, if you're more a policymaker here in the audience, uh, basically I'd like to remember that match funding should would basically stand in a context of innovation, somewhere in between the quad, quadruple helix Basically, we're talking of a combination of uh, business, of uh, government's interest, of, ac of academia and research and civic society. So basically, that's basically where match funding stands and it's so powerful. And uh, so that's a couple of examples of uh, the types of entities that we have been bringing on the, on the cosmology of match funding. So some uh, uh, city council, some social uh, banking, 
uh, some uh, innovation agency from certain regions. Uh, Europe now, for example, is an example of a European uh, foundation. Some regional regional uh, governments in in Spain, a, a, in the Basque Country, for example. So that's the type of. Uh, or a private uh, foundation for education in Catalonia, Foundation Jamo Balfil. That's the types of entities uh, who are changing their basically their politics of funding, introducing the what we call the crowd factor, right? So integrating citizens in the decision making on which types of projects should be funded and how citizens should be involved in them, right? Uh, so uh, we, as, as I was talking about the motivation of the uh, contributors to uh, community financing. We also have been analyzing a lot uh, the, let's say, the motivation of these types of public or private bodies participating in match funding schemes. So uh, that's another another report that you can read on the platform. So we have been analyzing uh, uh, the motivation, for example, of a private foundation, uh, which was moved, moved by their mission in education and funding for them was a community strengthener. Funner. So uh, uh, they, they would uh, see funding as a way of uh, empowering uh, uh, grassroots communities. Uh, we have an example of a regional government in Gibusqua. Uh, they've been uh, setting up five different uh, schemes for uh, cultural uh, projects. Some of them are heritage sites being renovated. Uh, and of course, their motivation is to have a structured platform that brings data and measurement of the impact of this project. And on the five years of the, the, the program last, uh, they've moved by citizen participation and their funding is part of their mission and vision, right? If we talk about the different uh, entities, such as the uh, you know, more like uh, uh, social good entities such as Europeana. Uh, of course, the civic crowdfunding model goes along with the idea of a transversality, transversality uh, building new types of institutions uh, which are more participatory. Uh, participatory culture is crucial for them. And they would like through these schemes to reinforce project funds uh, and it's really a milestone for them, right? So that's basically where civic crowdfunding can help uh, funders who are, you know, have, uh, consciously thinking that we should uh, basically uh, revolutionize a little bit uh, the way grants are distributed, right? Okay, what else? Uh, well, it's, what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm inviting you to, uh, we have been setting up a methodology and, and different lab spaces, which we call Fund Lab, to make sure that we're crossing the interest of social impact projects with uh with public bodies and private institutions so uh we're doing this type of training which are I mean, basically uh creating empathy between both sides and i think that's something uh that should be deployed in your in your local labs and maybe if you if you if you'd like we can help on uh, uh making sure before you decide for a, a governance model or a funding model of one kind or another uh, that we can help with uh, co-creation methodologies for you to organize these meetings uh, with local agencies and and, uh, and local communities uh, to make the best out of collective intelligence. Okay, so what uh, talking about the impact of these match funding schemes? Uh, what we we have been building this little animation. So if a board would be in a private entity or an institution, and if on the on the on the right side they need to cross all these uh, different steps to get to uh, their mission, basically. Uh, what would be achieved by implementing a call for match, fund, for match funding? For these institutions, they get more legitimacy, right? It's uh, Match funding is more ethical because it, it trusts the crowd, uh, the citizens, uh, basically, um, capacity of identifying where the, the social impact uh, stands. It creates more social engagement, it's more efficient, it creates community, and it's more in line, aligned with social, the social economy principles, which I think for a public body should be always uh, a by default feature, right? And of course, what the digital platform such as GoTeo brings is data to basically make sure to measure all these steps and uh, that are based on, on real data, right? So I'll show you a couple of examples, of course, it's would be better if we were together in the room, but uh, basically, what if we would be we have to make it a bit more simpler? Uh, we look at uh, at uh, match funding through different lenses, and each of these lenses have different data that the platform, because it's a digital platform, offers. Right? Of course, every all, all data are anonymized, 
and private, of course. But if you look at the lens of participation, the crowdfunding campaign on a platform such as Goteo would basically create through these different steps. So uh, a step would be the publication of the project on a platform. That's a series of data associated to this initial step. The crowdfunding campaign brings a lot, of course, uh, data on donors, the types of collaborators, where the donations come from. You could uh, geographically have a map of where the, the, the provenance of, uh, of donations, I think it's interesting. Uh, this is basically the location of the donation. Uh, you can r see the campaign evolution and look at uh, the communication communication action uh, and how these have been creating uh, improvement in the in uh, in the curve of uh, uh, finance of the campaign. And after the campaign, we also have a series of data that have been produced and can be analyzed, which is basically the communication with the donors after the campaign. During at least we measure it during one year after the project has been funded. And of course, we're offering like uh, visualizations and resources uh, to measure the uh, impact of, of the development of the project itself after the funding campaign, right? Uh, you could look at uh, these match funding schemes under the employment lens. Uh, I'm not going too much into details, but uh, uh, yet series of data on initiatives that are published on Goto that we can offer to public bodies. So we have uh, we know about the legal form. Uh, I can tell you that most of it on, on the Goto platform uh, are associations or cooperatives. Uh, we can access the budget breakdown. So this data is so important to consider the type of uh, training programs that should be designed uh, from the uh, city or uh, uh, regional government. Uh, you can see, uh, of course, all, the, on the, uh, all details on the money pledge. Uh, project description gives a lot of ideas of uh, what are the real needs of these initiatives. And during the crowdfunding campaigns, you have, of course, the, the, the money raised, uh, the donor's interest can be analyzed in which types of rewards or services. It's also important for the uh, for your initiative to, to know that, to, to see that uh, through testing out services, offering them as rewards, you can create a long-term sustainability model for your initiatives. You can look at the types of uh, uh, non-monetary contribution. Uh, and of course, this is something you have to uh, take care of. Uh, the, of course, the location of the donor, et cetera, et cetera. And after the campaign, you can uh, check uh, about the, uh, in the data on the other financial needs. Uh, Legal requirements for the development of the initiatives, the results on, on employment, of ma how many uh, jobs have been created, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, under the lens of social commitment, we also have many, many data. So, social commitment description, as it's the first question we're asking for a project be be before. Um, before being published. So what's your social commitment? Choose uh, an SDG, so a, a sustainable development goal uh, associated to your project mission. Uh, how do you create community awareness? So we have text, in, you have text uh, uh, data on, on that. Uh, of course, during the crowdfunding campaigns, we have a list of donors interested in on the specific objectives on the uh, uh, legacy of the project. So how replicable is a project? I think it's a great, of a great value. It's a data that is very important. And also all these non monetary contributors uh, that have shown their social commitment, right? Uh, and after the campaign, uh, we have we were publishing the results, so we have an impact analysis. Uh, all the project updates, so in their blog, uh, are also worth uh, looking at. Uh, and also uh, looking at the replicability model of these initiatives is something we need to consider, right? And how they comply with the SDGs, uh, they they meant to comply with at the initial the uh, start of the cycle, of their cycle, right? Okay, I'm almost there. Uh, but basically, I'd like to, to almost end up the match funding uh, chapter on these da data. Um, basically, uh, if we talk about, we have, a, we have uh, on the Goto platform, we have uh, an important um, uh, success rate, which is almost 80% right now. Uh, and, and then if you look at the match funding schemes, you look at uh, this, average goes up to 95%. So almost every project financed under these uh, schemes are successful. So that means that these co-responsibility schemes is the way to go. So if you have any initiatives that could, that could be uh, developed under these uh, match funding schemes, let us know. So last chapter, uh, we've looked at a uh, lot of impact data that the uh, digital uh, community financing platform can provide. And the real questions to end up is, uh, are we sure or can we measure the impact of projects uh, in a specific city and specific districts of a city or a region? And the response is yes. Um, but how do we measure the success of a project which gets funds 
thanks to both the citizenship and public entities for these matchmaking schemes. So now, uh, to, to end up the session, I'd like to recommend you a few papers we've been involved with. In the, uh, one of them is called the European Dimension of Civic Crowdfunding, and uh, we looked specifically on how civic crowdfunding is triggering participation. So this is a collection of civic crowdfunding and match funding experience in the EU. That's uh, published on the platform too. So as part of uh, that's a result of a, a work as part of the crowdfunding for European Social Investment Funds Lab. Uh, so that's very interesting that in the last few years the European Commission uh, sees crowdfunding as a, uh, and match funding as a very valuable model. So basically, we're talking now about combining civic crowdfunding and European funds. So that's that's something we should consider. Uh, I'd like also to recommend a book. We've been participating in writing a chapter. So uh, these basically these these type of materials are reminding us that research uh, and academic research on these new types of funding and participation opens the way to studying crowdfunding. You know, as a powerhouse for social change. This is a, a project called Crowd Assets, and specifically. Uh, um, written for policymakers. Uh, so this is basically about civic crowdfunding for policymakers. And we've wrote a chapter on match funding uh, for crowdfunding and also the experience from uh, our platform in new policies uh, for what we call crowd advocacy. Again, the combination of uh, crowdfunding and advocacy. I'd like also to talking about more on the technical side of, uh, of uh, things. We've been publishing many papers on uh, analyzing uh, data, but this one specifically on the nature uh, is very interesting. So we're looking at uh, uh, Goteo and uh, correlation with the match funding data uh, connecting sustainable development goals. And it's a um, joint pro project with the Demon Research Group at the U uh, Open University of, of Catalonia and the Goteo Foundation. And we have laid the foundation for studying the phenomenon of civic crowdfunding with scientific rigor, right? And it's published in open access in the Nature Group's journal Scientific Data. I'd like also to uh, draw your attention to the fact that we've been sharing uh, on the platform some uh, you know, training material. It's a kit called Learn by Funding. It's a kit for the crowd. So you can also practice and start co-designing with your community colleagues or um, policy makers, uh, agents around you. On, on building up uh, your your crowdfunding and your financing campaign, so it's basically very self-explainable, -explain uh, and I think it's uh, you can go through it. It's uh, if you have any troubles, just let us know. Just get in touch on the, on the platform. You'd have a different exercises on identifying your values, uh, and also on creating uh, budgets, uh, calculating the cost also of the production of the rewards you want to offer to the community, uh, and also like uh, all the list of uh, materials needed. Uh, for the renovation of the adaptive reuse uh, model you've been choosing, right? And then uh, there's also some exercises on really looking at how the community is influencing the design of our financing campaign. So you can learn a lot from the, your community before you launch a campaign. And you'd have to look at these different pillars of uh, what is the benefit, benefit I want to create. So uh, am I looking to found my own uh, um, project, my own building, or am I looking up uh, creating a community around it? Uh, and I'm uh, looking at creating social impact for the neighborhood around me. Uh, I am, am I creating uh, social impact uh, designing a replicability model for other sites of my kind in different countries and creating uh, European networks of these adaptive reuse uh, sites? Why not? Uh, so uh, may I consider economic benefits? Why not? Why don't we uh, create a creative um, uh, as you know, a creative uh, entity? What about a cooperative? Uh, after a crowdfunding platform, a crowdfunding campaign, a cooperative with the members, the most interesting, the most active donors or contributors to it, invite them to be part of your governance model, right? Okay, so all these exercises are on the disposal, on the disposal, and you'd have to look and measure and what we call the pulse of the community and basically equalize a little bit your value. You can't have all the value on the top level, uh, but you'd have to look at you know your feasibility, your fairness. Uh, looking at uh, how you respond to uh, gender equity, labor, uh, justice, and environment, for example, uh, that may gives you a great score for um, your your donors to contribute. Right? What we're gonna be sharing also with you is a mirror board, so you can interact also digitally. 
And we have been creating this game that we call the Community Financing Barometer Game. It's, uh, I guess you'll find the, uh, all the instructions on the board. It's also published on the platform. And it's basically about understanding the crowd factor indicators that have been talking through this school while taking the posts of the community again. So the objectives of this, uh, of this game is basically learn how to generate strategies uh, that strengthen the dissemination of a fundraising campaign, understanding the strategic importance of team collaboration and uh, collective intelligence and participatory governance and how this is combined again these all cycles of uh, co-designing a project, co-designing governance, co-designing a design an impact strategy and co-designing a funding campaign and then measure it at the end of the chain and also this game also uh, makes you understand how collaboration and support from an external public or private entity uh, such as what the cases we've seen in, in the match funding scheme can boost the success and the uh, uh, improvement of your initiative. So this is how the mirror board looks. Uh, we'll also have be publishing a, a, another video on explaining a little bit and drive you um, in, through the different steps of the game um, and keep it, um, keep it short. So if you have any questions, uh, please ask questions on this uh, module three of the, uh, of the alternative finance module of this training. Uh, it's on the platform too, so ask any questions. We'll be responding in a, in a, in a week or less. So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.